What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is the APA Season 5 Draft Number 3 of the San Francisco Giantes. Uh, we are ready to hit the ground running once again with another mono draft. So, uh, as I mentioned in the last draft video, I like to create a pseudo rush with these drafts. Um, and this time, for the first time ever, uh, I got number one draft pick overall, and that was just heaven smiling down upon me because I had this idea, but it only would have worked. It only would have worked if I had really high positioning. Um, first would be ideal because the mon I wanted to draft was a mon that very frequently goes first overall, and very likely to you know, go very highly after that. So even if I was like third, it could have gone before me. So uh, I wanted to start off the draft, hitting the ground running, uh, and I picked up Tapu Coco. And I, I've wanted to play with Coco for so long. I, I love electric terrain. I love the electric typing. I love fairy typing. These are two mons that are likely to, or this is two types that are likely to create some semblance of a rush uh, again. And so I had everyone guessing and I had a nice long wait, just had to like chill, watching people pick up, um, everyone in the, in the chat saying like, ooh, what's his gym going to be this time? And then it circles back around to me. Remember, I'm number one pick, which means my uh, two and three picks, uh, and then my three and four picks, and then my five and six picks all kind of go together at the same time. So uh, I will... I'll kind of introduce both of them at once. I should have done this with both of them on the slide at once, now that I think about it, but I didn't think to do that. Um, so I'll just kind of go, I'll kind of show you both of the mons and then talk about them, but I need to talk about pick number two right away because pick number two is the one that defined what this entire gym is going to be about. Everything about this gym comes down to this one pick. And when I picked it, it threw the whole league into a curveball. People messaging me like, wait, what is it? Is it this? Is this your dream? Like, and all of that. And that's because it was Halucha. And <laughs> so some people are going like, oh, Geo's not drafting mono this time. He's not trying to do that anymore. He's probably tired of losing, uh, which they're not wrong about. They're not wrong about that. But I promise you all, it is still a gym. It is still a mono. Um, well, I guess mono is the wrong thing to say. It's not necessarily, it's not a mono, It's but it's definitely a gym. Uh, and so let's just talk about this, this real quick. Tapu Coco Halucha. Now, Coco, obviously setting up the terrain and a terrain uh, with a Halucha is amazing because of Halucha's Unburden. Unburden, obviously... Um, uh, just in, in case people don't know the combo here, any Pokemon with Unburden, when they use their item, their speed doubles. So it's like instantly switching in and getting uh, a plus two speed boost, like clicking agility just upon switch in if you're able to use an item. So you give Halucha a seed, which gives you a boost if you're affected by the terrain. So the idea here, this is very commonly seen in OU, and it's a solid combo to occur in draft format because it is hard to deal with. And in the draft format, it's easier to try and set up scenarios in which you would be able to get this combo to work. So Halucha typically uh, will switch in after Tapu Koko has either died or volt switched out. Uh, maybe a slow volt switched against like a scarfer if you've done that like you can set up the scenario like you choose when coco comes in you just sit on halucha until the opportunity arises and then when you can bring halucha in safely the seed activates and in this case it's a plus defense seed so if the opponent happens to have just revenged the coco with a mon that's physical all of a sudden they're gonna have a hard time against lucha uh, who is now uh, in on the electric terrain, doubled his speed, and makes it very easy to get a swords dance off. And at that point, it's like you double dragon dance, but it only took you one turn to do it. It's like you shell smashed with a white herb. It's uh, it's an excellent combo. So really excited to see that in a draft format. It's like trying to deal with Sand Rush, except that you have better, more beneficial typings. Like Halucha and Tapu Koko uh, have really cool uh, type synchrony. You know what I mean? So I, I really like that. 
So, uh, of course, at the same time that I picked Coco, I got to pick another Mon, and so I ended up picking Azelf. Now, Azelf, for me, um, I'll let you guys, as I'm kind of going along here, try and predict what you think the gym is that I'm going for here. But I'll just say that uh, the reason I brought as I selected Azelf is because it's got great all-around coverage. It's got U-Turn, uh, which can form a Volt Switch core with Tapu Koko. It's uh, got great support options, uh, suicide lead options akin to what you would see a ton of in like Gen 4, Gen 5. Gen 5, uh, when he would go Stealth Rock into Explosion, he can pack Fire Blast as well for the coverage against Steels, which might resist it. Um, so there's options there, can be a more offensive, can be a more support role, can be a scouter. It's got a pretty good support move pool in other ways. And so I, I liked the versatility of it uh, and the tier that it fell in, which was two which is also what Halucha is, which is why it was my first free pick, costing 120. So then we had a long wait. We got to see lots of Pokemon go. People aren't really sure what my, um, aren't really sure what my gym is yet. And then we get picks four and five. Pick number four was Cobalion, and pick number five was Latias. So let's go over the Cobalion first. Uh, Cobalion, steel typing, which I really like. Uh, it provides me with, so here, here's sort of my thinking. We've got Lucha and Azelf, which are both immune to ground. Tapu Koko is weak to it, and Kabalion is too. Uh, but Kabalion is very defensive. It also provides, once again, Stealth Rock options, which frees up the ability for Azelf to go more offensive if I want to do that. Kabalion is, I think, a great tier 3 pick. Uh, can go special or physical. It's not particularly powerful, but it's fast and it's pretty defensive. Does have some support move options. The fighting typing, um, you'll kind of see it does share with Halucha, but despite sharing it, Halucha and Cabalion actually have incredibly different weaknesses, like Lucha being weak to uh, ice, which Cabalion is not, and Cabalion being weak to ground, which Halucha is not. Uh, and then, like, there's a lot of neutral exchanges, like, yeah, Electric is good against Halucha, it's not particularly good against Cabalion, etc., etc. Like, uh, there's there's a good trade-off in the synchrony of their typing there, so I really liked that. Uh, and then my pick number five was Latias. Now, Latias, obviously a tier one pick, so if you're looking at this, you'll already see a tier one and a tier two. We are putting ourselves in the territory that we're going to need to pick up some additional points. So not necessarily looking at tier one megas at this point. Latias provides me with another ground immunity to make it that I'm not uh, susceptible to earthquake spam. Uh, Earthquake, which I still consider to be one of the better moves uh, in draft format just because there's so little drawback to it once you've eliminated the threats. It's very powerful. It's got great distribution. I just think it's such a great move, so I like to make sure that I'm pretty resistant to it. Latias has some great support move options as well. It's got very good speed. It's got very good special defense. So between Kabalion and Latias, I feel like I've got pretty good defenses. Um... Psychic is shared with Azelf. They do share quite a lot of weaknesses, actually. Uh, the fact that I'm weak to ice as well as Halucha being weak to ice is also not super great, uh, but it fit the bill at the time. You'll kind of learn a little bit more about this as we go on. Uh, at this point, what people were saying, one of the guesses I got at this point was, are you running a duo type gym of fighting and psychic and then you just have Coco. And I'm like, no, that's not what I'm doing. Uh, so we'll keep moving. The next two picks, I picked Lycanroc Dusk and Mega Beedrill. Uh, and so at this point, I will just tell you guys, the theme of the gym is Mono Speed. Every Mon on this team is higher than base 100 speed. Every one on the team. So, um... A big reason for Kabalion and Latias was I did want some defensive options. I, uh, and I think Kabalion's very high defense, Latias is very high special defense. Uh, they both have good speed and they both have support options on them. Um, it's difficult to get really good support mons in this high of a speed tier. 
they don't not exist. There's actually several base 100s that are pretty good defensively, but I kind of told myself it's got to be higher than 100. Like, it can't be 100 or higher. It's got to be higher than 100. So, um, moving on, Lycanroc Dusk, um, it gives me priority, which is good in case someone uh, scarfs something ludicrously fast just to try and take away the speed advantage that being a mono speed gym gives me. Um, it also, so like Acceleroc, which is really good for that. I think um, the, the stat distribution is actually really good. Lycanroc Dusk has good speed and good attack. Um, it's, you know, the ability to run Edgequake is solid for it. Uh, I, I I'm pretty sure it learns Stealth Rock. I don't know much about Lycanroc. I've never really used it, um, but it was, it fit the build well. The typing uh, was pretty helpful for me as well, um, giving me resistances to burb spam um, so that I don't have to sack Coco for it. And so I, I, I like the idea of Lycanroc Dusk. And Mega Beedrill gives me, once again, a vi like another addition to an overwhelmingly powerful uh, Volt turn core here. Tapu Koko is very powerful Volt switch, um, or U-turn if I, if I wanted to. Mega Beedrill, super powerful U-turn, uh, also very high speed. Uh, with the adaptability, gives me great option for fairies uh, with my poison typing so really looking forward to trying bee drill i know it's very glass cannony that suits uh, a monotype gym pretty well obviously this is a little bit different because i am running multiple different types but um a lot of the mons you'll <laughs> this does still happen uh once people kind of started figuring it out uh they didn't necessarily say it openly but a lot of people were guessing in the group chat and it was giving people some ideas so a lot of the faster mons did start going um and so some of the mons that i thought would have been really good for me like i would have wanted crobat i wasn't able to get it and so that made mega b drill more uh, assured of a pick uh, i really wanted mega sharpedo but mega sharpedo is not greater than base or sorry yeah, regular Sharpedo is base speed 95, so that wouldn't have worked. I mean, I would have had to, like, make an excuse for it. Oh, but it's speed boost, so technically it's faster than that. It's not. That would have been cheating. Uh, Mega Sharpedo, I think, would have worked, though. Mega Sharpedo is, I think, higher than... All right. Uh, I need to just verify this. Yeah, it's 105. So Mega Sharpedo would have worked, but I was only going to get Mega Sharpedo if... I could uh, abuse speed boost on turn one and they wouldn't let me. So, and I mean, you know, that's the rules of it. That's why it's a lower tier mon. So I, I get it. So I ended up going with Mega Beedrill here. There were some other options. I could have gone Mega Absol. The issue I have with Mega Absol is I've used it before. Its defenses let it down and its offenses, while good, aren't netting the kills it needs to net. And so I don't particularly like it. It's not super mobile. The magic bounce, you can't really take advantage of it. It's just nice when it works out. Uh, but it's... it. Yeah. The issue with... Because because his offenses are, are good. The stat numbers are there on Mega Absol. The issue is that like the strongest stab it has is only base 80. And so you see things that are weaker then it have like worse offensive stat distribution but when you're able to click a move that's like 120 base power or something like that it really changes the the tides there so i just i felt like mega absol was a letdown so mega beedrill just kind of fit the bill a little better uh, has the coverage that i think it needs so uh, happy to try it out i think it'll be fun adding on to the u-turn core that i got going the volt turn core that i got going the next two picks were septile and ditto and so uh, Ditto, you don't need me to explain. You know I always draft Ditto. I love Ditto. I think Ditto is a lot of fun. Um, I just like having it. Like, I don't, like, it's not that Ditto is, like, outrageously good. Uh, it's kill numbers as far as, like, the tier that it's in are average, not amazing. But I just, I like it. I like it. I like playing with it. I think it's fun to play with. 
uh, and to, to work around it and force some team building elements. And I think when you can get a tier four mon that forces people to second guess their builds and build to try and counter a ditto, a tier four mon, I think that's awesome. Uh, but let's go back to Sceptile. Now, little known fact, Sceptile also gets unburdened, just like Halucha. So I can actually run an electric seed on this as well. And uh, Sceptile does learn, I believe, Swords Dance as well. So I can also take advantage of this to be blazing fast, set up a Swords Dance, and potentially sweep. So that one's uh, going to be a fun one for me as well. Moving on to the last two picks, we have Frostlass and we have Simipor. So I'll talk about Simipor first because there's much less to say about it. It's a tier 5. There's not a lot of tier 5s that breach the 100 speed tier. There's or at least ones that are even worth considering. Um, maybe there's like Ninjask, but I don't need to speed pass, so I wasn't really very interested in that. Um, some of the other ones that were pretty good, I think had gone. So looking at the Simis, Simipore has the potential. Oh, you know what I was considering? I was considering Lipard because Lipard could run support sets with Prankster, but it also gets unburdened. So it could be unburdened nasty plot or something like that uh, and just hyper take advantage of the Coco situation. I elected not to do that because I think water typing, having water typing is, is solid. Simipore is not good. Um, but it's a tier 5, so it doesn't really need to be. It does get access to boosting moves, so it's not completely out of the question that it could do something or catch someone off guard, but it's not a good Pokemon, uh, and it's a tier 5, and I was okay with it being the way it is. And Frostlass, uh, fortunately, I was able to gain enough points with the Mega Beedrill to make it that I could... Um, get three tier 4s and not have to double up on tier 5s. As much as I know that there are tier 5 picks that can fit a team's mold pretty well and actually be a pretty big threat despite being such a low tier, I didn't have any that would work for this team in general and I don't super like having them uh, because I do feel like at times you have to try really hard to make them fit on the squad and it, it sometimes feels like you are making exceptions to an ideal team build just to try and get a, a curveball in there when if you just drafted a higher tier mon that has some, a little more going for it if you just teched it differently that could be better so i'm glad that i i minimized the need to have to draft multiple fives with the points that i had remaining frost last um is a tricky one and i i think tricky is exactly what i needed at this point in my draft the Ghost typing is great to have. Destiny Bond, I think, is a great fail safe. And it's a spiker. And there's a lot that can kind of come from that as a benefit. It also learns Will-O-Wisp. There's a lot that it can provide me. Um, I think on a team build like this, just with how fast it is, I think it can be very beneficial to just get up hazards, get out of there. You know, like Azelf. Stealth Rock, Explode, Frostlass, come in and maybe get a layer of spikes, maybe two if you're lucky, and then Destiny Bond out of there. And now we're coming in with Coco uh, and or, or Mega Beedrill, and then we're just U-turning out of there into a Coco to Volt Turn out of there into an, into what have you. Uh, and then when we get the opportunity to come in with Lucha, we get Unburden, we get our Swords Dance up, and now things are taking 25% or more every time they switch in. Cannot survive. Uh, the high damage output that Halucha is going to be able to put out with the acrobatics and we can potentially sweep. That's just the mindset that goes into how the team works. Obviously, it's not that simple. People can prep for it and build around it, but that's just an example of the kind of setup option that you get access to by having a good spiker. And I think Frostlass is one of the better ones there is. So uh, what do you guys think of the team? Uh, let me know in the comments section down below. As always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by. I will see you guys next time.